last time we were talking about um, low density parity check codes. how to decode them with the sum product algorithm. And at the end of the class, I introduced um, a related class of codes called the repeat accumulate codes, um, which are, um, which have a structure that's much similar to LDPC codes. Uh, they are much easier to encode, and they also have excellent decoding performance. So today, all I want to do is just clean up some loose ends. Uh, today will be the last um, Class that we cover new material, and in the last um, the last meeting of this course, which will be on Thursday, um, I'll just uh, make myself available for uh, uh, for your questions. Uh, it'll be a tutorial format, so I'll just come, and if you have any questions, prepare them for that class, and uh, we'll do it that way. So today, I just like to clean up, uh, like I said, uh, clean up some loose ends. So. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to talk briefly about um, the channel message, um, in other words, the evidence, uh, the uh, the observation um, obtained by the channel, how you start the decoding process, and then I'll run you through an example of low density parity check decoding, and then I think that'll be enough. <coughs> so remember that we have. Uh, Bipartite structure to the factor graph consisting of these nodes, which I call variables. Would you care to answer a quick question? Yes. I should, I should have come to the office all right. Please. Uh, why did we do the uh, permutation? Why do we do the permutation? Um, the permutation. You said to make the cycles as uh, as good as, uh, as acceptable. Or so, so that's right. Yes. Okay. Yes. But do we do that on on a given? Because that's a modification of the graph. Yes. So how, how do we use it? Um. Could you include that in the example or? What is the point of the permutation? Um, it'll be hard to include in the example because um, I mean it's just it's just it's 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 somewhat artificial, and um, the point of the permutation is simply to uh, I mean uh, you want long you want uh, large cycles in this graph. In other words, you want um, uh, on average, if you start a variable, you don't want to come up, come back to that variable. And maybe, maybe I don't understand the question. Yes, I, I could not phrase it. Um, the topology of the graph is given by the constraints on the variables and yes. the, uh, the check functions, the yes. rows of the matrix. So you modify it and you make it a permutation. That's correct. Okay. So, where, where do you use that permutation? Because we calculated everything based on that permutation. And all these uh, log likelihood ratio was given on that. But uh, when and why do we modify this given topology to, to reach that permutation? Right. So, the, uh, um, what I defined last time was actually a class of code. So each permutation um, provides you with a, uh, a different low density parity check code. So in fact, um, I said that the, the codes could be characterized by, at least the regular codes could be characterized by the degree of the variables, the degree of the checks. And I guess you could also argue that the permutation is also a feature of the codes. In other words, if I give you the degree of the variables, the degree of the checks, and the permutation that specifies in LDPC code. Because given that, you can write down this graph. 
Oh, so the topology is already given by the process. Yes. Okay. And then and once you have this graph, then you can write down the parity check matrix, which will then define the generator matrix. I see. We start with the graph and then reach the parity. Exactly. That's, uh, I, I, I should have made that clear last time, but that's the point. You start with the graph because the graph is the easiest uh, structure to, to deal with in, when you talk about low density parity check codes. Okay. So the graph defines the code, not the other way around. Um, so we have this bipartite structure, just to remind you, each variable has a variable degree, dv, so this is a regular LDPC code, and each check, I call these checks, these represent, or parity checks, these are the constraints that appear in every row of the parity check matrix. In other words, in the parity check matrix, uh, we have rows. Uh, those rows have elements which are zero and elements that are one. Um, if an ele if the, the set of elements in that row that are one, if you take, uh, well, basically, this is, this is how it works, as we've seen. If you take the code word, multiply by H transpose, the result has to be the zero vector. So in other words, H transpose, consists of, well, excuse me, let me back up. H consists of row H1, H2, and so on up to Hm. So therefore, H transpose consists of H1 transpose, H2 transpose, and so on up to Hm transpose. Like so. So therefore, CH transpose implies that CH1 transpose equals zero, CH2 transpose equals zero, and so on. So in other words, if I multiply C by each of these H transpose, the constraint is that that must be equal to zero. And that's what these parity checks represent. So each of these has a degree of DC. And we saw last time the rate of the code is equal to one minus DV over DC. <coughs> so, uh, last time we went into considerable detail talking about how to calculate messages. So we decode this code by calculating messages locally at every node and then passing those messages along the edges. So we saw last time that this was true, and that a variable dv minus one inputs, one output, and this represents the channel message. All of these are alien. These are input messages from the graph, that's an input message from the channel, and that's the output message back to the graph. And we saw that L out is equal to uh, LC, plus the sum of the input messages, where all of these are expressed as log likelihood ratios. At a check, we saw we have DC minus one input messages from the graph. There's no equivalent to the channel message down here. And the output is L out is equal to this funny expression we showed twice arc tan h, that's hyperbolic, that's inverse hyperbolic tangent, arc tan h. That's the product from i equals 1 to dc minus 1, all of the input messages, tan h 